Hello everybody and welcome once again to my continuing Halloween season as we continue progressing through the various different Sundays of Halloween Advent when the time when all that is weird and spooky and all the rest of it comes to the surface at least within uh, popular media and entertainment and TV and the like. But what am I talking about today? Now, you'll be pleased to hear that the final video of my Halloween Advent series will be the grand finale, in which case we'll be going back to doing our back to basics, back to what is really important in the world, namely pieces of wood with letters on them and numbers and words. Mm. Which is obviously going to be fun and exciting and will create a different variety of experience for you based upon the Ouija board and hopefully that will be fun and interesting and curious and you'll enjoy it. But let's talk about the subject of today. Now you know full well that I am Nick Dutch, I'm a professional reader, I work via psychic lines, that's my job, and I use things like rune stones, and I use things like uh, tarot cards of various different types. These are the Travis McHenry ones, um, the Occult Tarot, Lesser Key of Solomon, the Angel Tarot, Enochian System. I also have other, lots of other fun decks downstairs. Got the 40 Servants here, Golden Dawn, Old Crows. Uh, basically, you know, you, you, you know what's what. You know, I, I do this stuff. But some of you might be thinking, like, why? And what is the point of getting involved with divination and doing divination as a hobby or a job or of interest? In what way will it do the world some good? Surely it's a load of rubbish anyway. And so on and so forth. Okay? Let's start from the top. Divination is not a load of rubbish. Divination is a means from a skeptical and an atheistic point of view of using apparently random symbols and ideas to help to nudge your thoughts and thinking in the right direction. That's from the more skeptical point of view. It can also be used as an addition to creative problem solving at times. Not in every possible way or in every possible case, but it can be used for that. It can also be used to tell stories and to try and build an understanding of a situation through the telling of a story about something or about someone or about some situation. It's also the use of symbolism through meditation, either to try and help you to open up the spirit, which is what some people do, or as a means to try and work out what those symbols are trying to teach you in some kind of like strange creative way. So essentially drug-free use of all the states of consciousness technology in the form of meditation, concentration, spirituality, spiritualism type exercises. But also, what is it with the randomness? Surely a random outcome is a random outcome. Well, maybe it is just a random outcome. But if it was just a random outcome, in what way would that be quite so useful? that an entire megalithic industry can be built based upon it. And that there will be hundreds of thousands, if not millions or billions of people who at some point in their life will consult a reader or will start to learn to do reading themselves. For something which is so big, for something which is so heavily predominant within society, even though society doesn't always admit to it, there must be something there namely a usefulness okay this is useful to people okay on one side of things we could say it's about using analogy or allegory in order to try and help people to understand life better or in a different different way or a different point of view but what if there actually is something to it okay the issue there would then be that of singularity. There is a particular singular experience which is created. There is a particular singular happening which is the product of uh, the conversation between the client and the reader. 
so in a particular specific situation which will probably never be perfectly repeated ever just like the sky is never repeated okay there's always something different about the various eddies and currents which change the shapes of the clouds different about the condition you know some things will never be perfectly repeated or perfectly replicated but in those particular situations it seems that some particular signs tend to come up it seems that there's a particular feeling that there is an answer to a question so maybe there is something more to it than just randomness and maybe the action of sortilege and by which I mean the shuffling of the cards and the stirring of the rune stones is somehow helping to place them out in a pattern which somehow has some kind of use for the situation. This is of course going to be open to much debate as everything associated with the world of the weird is and I don't think we have yet a hard and fast cohesive understanding or appropriate spirituality in terms of how the shuffling of a deck of cards could be useful or used in order to find information. We have too many points of view and not enough hard science. So if my hypothesis is correct, that when there is the client and the reader together, what you've got there is a situation which can never be repeated ever again. How could you put it to the test in accordance with um, standard scientific procedures, which is based upon repeatability? Well, maybe you can't. But the more of it you do, the more you realize that there appears to be something going on here which is somehow useful to both yourself as an individual who happens to have these you know, books of symbols in the form of tarot, in the form of runes, in the form of this, that and the other. And something seems to be happening. So maybe we can try and simplify it and call it uh, being down to energies or down to fates. Maybe this is an expression of fatalistic forces. When I pour out a handful of rune stones like I'm about to do right now. There's something fatalistic about the universe which connects the random with the less random. Hmm. So the stones I've poured out for myself include Thorn and Hagar. Both of them rather appropriate for the Halloween season. I believe it is the rune Hegel, which is actually on the Nordic uh, or Northern European wheel of the year for Halloween itself. Uh, and Thorn is about being protected, but looked after, but also able to attack your, your enemies somehow. Just for your information, that the third stone which came out was the blank one. The mystery. So I think maybe this Halloween season is going to be a bit mysterious for you, a bit complicated. And there may be a need to make sure people understand you better. So that better things happen rather than worse things. If you're going to enjoy your Halloween season and you're going to get yourself involved in forms of divination. Do so with a clear head on your shoulders and do so with wisdom. Remember that the real psychic power doesn't come from the cards or from any form of a ritual tool or accessory. It comes purely from here which means it's that which you've got to get stronger. Does that make sense? Speak to you soon and happy Halloween.